What's up, everybody, and welcome to The Hive. I'm your host today because Vivian's on vacation. So I'm taking over here today. Uh, you might know me from uh, Open Mic Night here, uh, the Tuesday, which is a We Are Improv VR event. But I also do this other thing called uh, As an Actor in VR Chat Improv. And uh, yeah, that's... Uh, whoa, why am I over here? Whoa. Uh, yeah, so this is what I look like in VR Chat. And this is our special guest today, Goblox, the host of VR Chat Improv. Hi guys. He's a bit more than uh than the host too. Uh, yeah, you do you do a lot of stuff for VR Chat Improv, don't you? you? I mean, you don't just host it. There's all this other like background stuff that goes into it too, like uh oh yeah, production and stuff. Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. Oh, why don't yeah. you tell us about uh VR Chat Improv? What exactly? What is the show VR Chat Improv? So it's basically like a show that's based on. It's sort of similar to that popular improv show, Whose Line Is It Anyways? Uh, we do yeah. a lot of games in there, uh, a lot of improv games, so it's a lot of fun. And um, it goes about an hour long, and we have six people on stage, and they all participate on games. And, yeah, that, that's that's what we do. So, Have you cool. thought about calling it something like, What's Line Is It Anyhow? Or, mm -hmm. I'm talking, I'm talking at this moment. Or what, 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 or something, yeah. Yeah, or what, 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 what you, what, who, who's supposed to be saying that? Right? Who yeah, said what? Who said, <laughs> yeah, who said, yeah, I don't know, just, just some ideas if you ever think to change the name. That's great, that's great, I'm uh, making some notes. Yeah, What's up, yeah, get, get the last one down, that one, I, I might take that one, actually. Uh, it's <laughs> mine. <laughs> so, yeah, did you, did you have, like, uh, so what is your uh, history with improv before bringing it into, uh, VR here. Um, so I had always been a fan of improv. So the show started about um, almost two years ago. We started in around May or June of 2017, and it really started with us just wanting to. I mean, back then there weren't a lot of people using VR, and so we were really trying to push, trying to do different things. And one of the ideas we had was doing plays in VR, and so we were trying like a lot of different like. Um, a lot of different ideas for plays, and we weren't sure like what stories were sticking and which weren't and all this stuff. So we sort of came up with this idea of, hey, why don't we start doing improv and trying out some of these ideas and seeing if anything sort of grows out of it. And so we started doing that, and actually we got like a really good response from improv. Everybody was loving it, and it was a lot of fun. And so then I just sort of ended up just focusing just on doing improv, and that's sort of how it all came about. Before that, I hadn't had really any experience like running an improv show or anything. I just knew about what people had told me about like doing uh, yeah. improv classes and whatnot, and what I had studied online. So it was really a new experience for me altogether. So it, so. Just, it just kind of fell on you to mm -hmm. kind of take it over. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, when I originally got involved, I wanted to be one of the actors like in the show, like learning how to do improv. I thought that would have been cool. Like I always wanted to do improv and stuff, but um, it just turned out that, they really needed someone to host the show. And that's, through my life, that's what I've always tended to do is like, usually places need someone to lead them, someone to sort of fill in and be able to help everyone move along. So that's what I did. And it's been really great. It's been a lot of fun. So and two years How later, here we are. So. Oh yeah, two years, two years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's gotta be, so I mean, I, I was asking you this and I, I think that it's accurate. It, it is definitely the longest running improv show in VR. Oh, yeah. I mean, that I know for sure. I and mean, we were starting back in VR chat when we'd have like a max of like 30 people online, you know, like some, yeah. some nights there would be nobody online. So, I mean, I, you can't start much earlier than, than that. So, um, and it really started because like a lot of us would just hang out like, you know, uh, gabbing, like, you know, almost like doing improv with each other when we were hanging out, just joking around and whatnot. And it was sort of a natural thing. A lot, a lot of my friends I was doing that joking around with and stuff, mm -hmm. they came into the show. And we did it a little more formally. Yeah, I remember when uh, when Alt Space was going through its like closing kind of period. Uh, one of my really good friends, uh, Oddity, was always suggesting I go jump on that because I'm always like joking around and stuff. And that was like a year. It took me forever to, to go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, jump on, but you know, glad I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. 
so you've been running it for two years now, you said? Mm-hmm. Uh, About two years. How has it changed over all that time? Oh, boy, it changed a lot. I mean, we originally started out just with, like, people would be on stage, and we'd be saying, okay, we're going to do this story. Okay, which way does this want to go? People in the audience would be shouting out ideas, and we'd be changing it this direction. It was very unorganized and moving people around and all this stuff. But um, it got a lot more structured over time. And so yeah. um, so it, it's, it's a lot more. I wanted to really focus on the people doing improv, like not so much like it necessarily being much of a show because I know like mm-hmm. IRL, a lot of people will do like improv classes and stuff that aren't even yeah. interested in like going on stage. Like for them, it's a rewarding thing to be able to go in, do improv for themselves and uh, it helps them in their lives and stuff. So for me, I was like, well, I want to kind of provide that in VR. So from the very beginning, I was very much like, well, I want to have like warm up periods and I want to have like exercises we do to like get better at it and all this stuff and sort of center it around that. And um, so now over time, we're at the point where we're at now where that sort of all comes together and we do the warm-ups, we do the practices, we have the workshops on Saturdays. Yeah. And, you know, it's, a, it's sort of something for everyone. So, yeah, the, the workshops on Saturdays, the, those weren't always there? No, absolutely there not. Was some, we, something you brought into it? Yeah, as the show got more and more popular, we would get to the point where um, when we were doing them in, like, public spaces in VR chat. Uh, we would get so many people in there. Like we get like back when we could, this could happen was technical, technically possible. We would get like 80 people in the room sometimes, like, you know, totally watching the show. And it was like crazy. So what would happen is naturally you're like, well, I'm in VR. You, you think, well, what's the harm? You know, it's I'm in VR. Well, how are you going to get stage fright and anything like that? But it does happen. Yeah. And you're up there and you're on stage and you're immersed and there's all these people out there. It can be kind of stressful. And so I wanted to try to give a way for people. At that point, what we were doing was we were saying one week we'd have a show where it was like open improv, where anybody from the audience, we'd say, anyone that wants to do improv, come up on stage and you can do it with us. And then the other week we'd have it with our cast of actors. And so what we found out was on the open improv days, we were getting less and less people wanting to come on stage because there's so many people and people, you know, it's just the whole like, I guess, embarrassment and, you know, stage fright thing, all that stuff. And so the, the doing the workshops on Saturdays with there's no audience there. If you're there, you're doing improv. Nobody can come and, like, watch and spectate. Uh, that really gave people a chance to try it out and see if it was for them. And um, that was for, like, new people. And then for people that were already, like, really good at improv, like yourself and a lot of other people in the show, it gives you a chance to sort of work on specific things. So it, was, it would sort of covered a lot of bases. And, and overall, like one of the things, the best things about it was it sort of introduced people to the improv community, which is like a lot of really yeah. great people in VR chat. And so to have that chance to come on stage and like no audience there, meet everybody, goof around with them, get to do exercises with them. I think that's like one of the coolest things about the workshop myself. Yeah. I, yeah. I Like I really uh, feel like I've developed a lot in that workshop myself like i really really appreciate you putting that on all the time i imagine most people's like yeah most people's introduction not knowing about improv is probably just whose line is it anyway and then you kind of like show them that it's not just uh uh not just trying to make jokes all the time right like there's there's more to improv than just trying to make jokes trying to get jokes to land oh yeah absolutely in fact like so if you're like in your head thinking of jokes and one-liners you want to do, that's actually like a really like bad thing in improv. That's called gagging. And what you really do is you end up, you know, you're trying to drop gags all the time. And improv is very much like a team thing where you and I are in a scene. We're both sort of going down this path together. We're both adding things to it and we're creating a scene together. And if one person is in their head thinking about, oh, well, what, what's the next thing? How am I going mm-hmm. to say so I'm going to make the, the audience yeah. laugh? You're really stepping out of that whole idea of the, of the group team thing and you're sort of creating a block where now the other person has to sort of like take whatever you said and try to move forward with it where you're no longer really working together so yeah yeah it's it's not about you know trying to drop gags and stuff all the time yeah yeah i know it's like i'm always in that i'll i'll get in that uh loop where i'm thinking before a scene happens and i'm just like no to get that out of my head get that out of my head try to try to have a blank page as as much as possible like i've noticed any time that i try to like Try to like land Shut a joke. Up. My improv is just terrible going forward <laughs> in the scene. I pretty much just drop out. 
just because I tried to land that one joke. And then I might even like mess up on the joke anyway, so it wasn't even worth it. So, <laughs> and then yeah, it sort of throws that, that little speed bump in what you guys are doing, but you know, um, it, it's all a learning process. You know, I'm sure over time you get more used to okay. I need to get out of this mindset, you know, because that's like everybody's sort of natural mindset is to think, oh, well, I need to do this when you enter something. And so it's really about almost like retraining people. And I mean, even yeah. my, I myself struggle with that a lot of times. Um, there's a balance as well. Like if you go into a scene and you're starting out a scene with someone, you can think mm -hmm. about stuff ahead of time, like maybe some keywords and stuff like that yeah. you want to sort of keep around. But yeah, you shouldn't be like, you know, planning everything out or else it's not really improv, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's got to be got to be improvised if it's improv. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's you know all the techniques and stuff. Uh, you're training people in improv and all that. But uh, um, what are some of the challenges at, that come into it when you throw VR in the mix? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of challenges. I mean, you can't see expressions on people's faces, uh, which could add a lot to scenes. Hello. Um, you, uh, uh, you, uh, a lot of body language doesn't come across, and I think that's real. What's really interesting is so many people, like almost everybody in the regular cast, has like full body tracking now, and I feel that that's like it, it's it's super interesting because it tends to be the minority now where you don't have it if you're doing improv, and it's certainly not a requirement to do improv. In fact, sometimes it's even better if you don't have that full body tracking. It's for comedic yeah. effect and whatnot, but um, it's definitely something where. You want to try to express yourself with body language like as much as possible. And VR does have its limitations when it comes to that. You know, you can't see like where I'm really looking, my eyes and all that stuff. And and yeah, so definite challenges when it comes yeah, to Yeah, I always think like like with uh, voice acting or, or or maybe like theater acting or anything, you're always like encouraged to emote more and it's like you almost have to do that with what you have, your tools in VR are pretty much your hands yeah. and uh, movements and everything. Yeah, and you have to like almost exaggerate, you know, one of some of the exercises as you know that I do are like exaggeration exercises. Mm -hmm. And those you almost have to do like tenfold when you're in VR to really get that yeah. across. Um, and that's not even like one of the biggest challenges that we have is latency. Like that, as you know, is like one of the big problems if you've yeah. got, if you, you know, a lot of times you want to do these scenes where you've got a lot of people on stage, but it's just not possible because of latency. You end up wanting to say something, and someone else wanted to say something, and now you're talking on top of each other. So there's that's that's a huge challenge when it comes to it. Yeah, I know. There's some there's some games I'd really like to do that are like musical games and stuff, but it just a lot of them just won't work because uh, latency is just not there. Like it's just oh man, it's so frustrating. <laughs> Totally. I would yeah. love to do that kind of stuff, too. It's also fun to come up with ways to try to work around that and solve those sort of insolvable problems. And so, um, yeah, and improv is a great way to test that stuff out. Yeah, so you do you do more than just uh, just put this show on. You Like, as if you go watch the YouTube channel, the whole production has changed over time, too. Like, what kind of, what kind of things have you done to get a good VR production? Uh, going for your channel and for and streaming as well. Well, I was I was a kid that grew up watching like a lot of TV, and so I have sort of in my head like how shows are supposed to work and like what you watch when you're looking at that box, what you want to see. And so for me, it was sort of always pushing towards a produced kind of show because mm -hmm. a lot of people say, oh, well, TV, blah, you know, we don't want that kind of thing. But what people don't realize is that having nice camera cuts and stuff like that really can convey sort of the humor of a scene. You sort of are taken out of noticing where the actors are standing and funny things like maybe like what they're wearing and uh, something that they're doing to the, the exact content that they're trying to get out to you. So um, that was, so when we started out, we just had basically one camera pointed down uh, on the stage and it was very like, it was very, hello, it was very like, um, a very static. You know, and you sort of watch these people yeah. walking on stage. And, and for a long time, I wanted to switch to doing more cameras and finally got the technology to be able to do that. And so I um, started being able to do different, um, do different camera angles, and that helped a lot. And then things like um, having, like, background music now and having, um, like, the stage markings and whatnot. Um, yeah, the stage markers. So this was actually a night where the equipment kind of messed up and was showing everybody uh, at home like what the stage markers look like. But that's great 
because you guys can see when the actors are on stage, these are like the kinds of markings that yeah. they can see. So they can see like where to stand and stuff like this. And so like having that kind of technology really helps the fluidity yeah. of the show. Um, and also if you're doing camera placement and stuff, you want people standing in the right spot. So that really helped a lot with that. So um, a lot yeah, of Yeah, you built out all these tools, haven't you? Like all these. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Oh, all I'm these sorry, tools. You're, you're breaking oh, my up audio a little bit. Up. All right, maybe it'll get better in a second. <laughs> certain ways so you have to build the stuff in to do it and nobody else is going to really do it for you so you just have to do it yeah. yourself so i had to learn a lot about um all about programming and unity and the limitations that we have in vr chat like not being able to do scripting and stuff and you know being able to make that whole camera system and everything without any scripting was a feat in and of itself so yeah it was everything there's uh, all the technology is stuff that i built into it so on on this uh, subject here, you know, talking about uh, how you're using technology here in VR and within a, within a game engine, uh, I mean, what are some benefits you think VR brings to improv as a whole, uh, as far as performance and production and, and the whole thing? Like, what what kind of benefits do you think come out of it? Well, I think right off the bat, the biggest benefit is, I mean, how much would it cost us to have a theater like this big IRL to do this stuff? And like with yeah. other projects we're working on with studios and stuff, it's like this space with real estate wise, caught, you couldn't do this stuff, you know? And so like to be able to ha build these spaces in a, in a virtual space that costs you the know, next to nothing to run, it's just, it's something that that technology alone, just for that fact, um, just makes it, you know, amazing to be able yeah. to do that. That's one of the things. Yeah. yeah. And us being able to come up uh, from anywhere in the world and, actually meet up every night in the comfort of our own home and stuff. I mean, um, yeah. I've, I've probably been to some of those workshops like butt naked and nobody, nobody knows. I'm That's just, great. you know, super comfortable in my panties and nobody knows I'm wearing panties. And it's fantastic. That's what I like to hear, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, the, um, I think, I think also like a lot of the things that VR sort of lends itself to like really helps with it. Um, like being able to do things like, um, like some ideas for games that we have where people will be sort of like inside other people and, and doing like, you know, placing arms of other people and stuff. That stuff we yeah. can certainly only do um, in VR. So um, there's a lot of, and, and I mean, the, the thing you just brought up, sorry to be jumping around, but the thing you just brought up about how people can be anywhere in the world and be doing, I mean, that to me is just amazing. And I take that for granted a lot of the times. We're standing on stage in a circle and we're doing, you know, our exercises and stuff and you've got yeah. someone from uh, England, you got someone from Texas, you got someone from Florida, Canada, but, and they were just all standing in a circle together and yeah. you're doing improv together. And it's, I mean, where else could yeah, you I know a couple guys are from that? Sweden or something, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 People from all over. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and like, <laughs> yeah. And like, I, I mean, I really appreciate it because it's really something for, uh, you know, that really makes me feel like I'm doing something active. Like, like I went to, uh, I went to improv workshops for a little bit and it kind of helped me get out more and stuff um but it's i don't know it's gotten a little difficult for me lately but being able to go to a improv workshop in vr i still feel like i'm going to a physical improv workshop like i, I you know i'm completely immersed in things so yeah uh this yeah this guy especially zircron he, oh, yeah. i know he takes advantage of stuff in vr he always ends up flying or something in the in the events <laughs> There's um uh, some different sets that you've you've uh, created too. Like uh, there's one for the uh, press conference and uh, um uh, what was the other one? There was like a good cop bad cop one from like an old old set. Oh yeah, the interrogation stuff that we used to do. Yeah, that's something that's really cool as well. And something I kind of want to take advantage of more is that you can like get people so immersed. Like one of the things that'd be really cool is 
uh, we do this one game called uh, Noir, uh, Noir mm -hmm. Story. And so it basically, it's supposed to be almost like we're doing, improvising a scene out of like a noir theme, like detective kind of movie or something like that. And typically those are shot in like sepia tone and it's, you know, black and yeah. white and stuff like that. So one of the things you can do in the theater is you can throw post-processing effects on the camera and you can bring that so you can have the whole music come in. Everybody's eyes, like everything will suddenly turn into black and white for them, like really draw yeah. people in. Like that's all stuff that's like really awesome and gets people immersed in the scene. So. Yeah, and it's all just instant. It's not like you don't have to have a bunch of stage hands come in and bring in chairs and, all kinds of <laughs> all right. kinds of manual labor and stuff. Right. Yep. Well, uh, yeah. I was, well, I just want to see if uh, if there's any questions from the audience we could take right now. If anybody anybody has anything they'd like to ask here. What's on the next session? Oh, what's, what's that? that? What's going to happen in the next session? Do you think? Next session of uh, VR Chat Improv? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So next one is going to be on Sunday. And we're going to do, just as we always do, we're going to do, you know, four or five improvisational games. And it's going to be just more of the same. And we'll have a, every week I try to switch out different casts of actors. So, yeah, it should be, should be a lot of fun. Okay, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Go to VRChatImprov.com to see when the times are and how to get in there and everything. So... I got a question uh, here from uh, Michael. It says, what's the funniest moment you've seen while doing improv? Oh, geez. Oh, that's, that's really, God, it's, and I don't mean to like, sound cliche, like, oh, there's so many, but there are, like, so many, like, scenes. It's hard to recall, but sometimes these guys just will have me in stitches with, like, what they're doing, and I really... I can't believe sometimes the stuff you guys can come up with. Like, there's a lot of times when I'm I'm putting together like the games and stuff that we're gonna play, and I'll be like, I don't think that it, this is like asking too much of them. You know, like I don't want, you know yeah. to have them do this on stage. Like this is too much. But then I'll go, eh, let's see what happens anyways. And I'll, and like you guys like will knock it out of the park. So it's yeah, it's uh, it's pretty impressive what you guys can do. So I know that's like now trying to like, yeah, I know that's like now doing the Tuesday. I'm I'm always. Like, I'm trying to look at, like, new games, and I'm like, well, I don't really do a workshop, so I don't know if I can just push this game, like, <laughs> like but, but it's it's mostly us who all work together in VR Chat Improv that are on that show, so, you know, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I'm starting to, I'm starting to feel, you know, that same feeling, like, should I do this, should I make them do this? <laughs> I right. find, though, like, what really tends to happen is that, like, I myself, like, I'm a big critic of myself, and so I'll look at this and go, oh, well, I wouldn't be able to do this, you know, but this would be, like, too, this would be asking, like, a lot of me, how could I do, but a lot of times, it's just having the faith in the other people that they can do it, and so, like, you guys yeah. are so talented that, and I've gotten so used to being able to throw almost anything at you guys, and you guys, like, knocking out of the park, that it's not too much of a concern anymore, so. So uh, I was wondering, uh, could could we do like maybe a? Um, well, hold on a second. There's a question here. It says, uh, "What's your favorite improv game?" For me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. And, uh, I and, and... I really oh god, that's hard to choose. I really like um, Big Thoughts, Small Words, which was actually a yeah. game that was created by Clem yeah. Johnson. And that one is just, it's a lot of fun. So basically in that game, two actors, uh, they improvise a scene and everything they say must be in one syllable words. And so to watch them go back and forth and try to, yeah. you know, act out this whole scene with just saying one syllable words is the ways that they can come around, like especially you, the way you come up with to get around yeah. that <laughs> syllable limitation is just freaking hilarious. So. Yeah, that's that's uh that's my favorite game too. And I, I was wondering why, why don't we just uh, demonstrate that here? Yeah, like we could just play play around with that. Um, yeah. What do, what do we need? We need a uh, location oh. and, a, and a situation. Yeah. Let uh, you guys throw out some locations for us. Yeah, just go ahead and unmute and shout out some locations for us to use. Anybody? Seven Eleven store. <laughs> okay, Seven Eleven store. And what's, yeah, going, what's going on? on don't stop. What's that? An argument. An argument. An argument about what? 
No Doritos. No Doritos. No Doritos. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So this is big thoughts, small words. The rules are. You go ahead and tell the rules. Yeah. It's, we have to just do it all in one syllable words. So. Yep. Hi. Hey. Do you have the bag of shit that I like? Well, I don't know what kind of chips you like. Why don't you tell me? <laughs> well, they are blue and they are red. The bag is. Right. I would think blue and red chips would be rather odd. Okay, let's go rather. look in the aisle <laughs> and see if we can find them. Ah, are these them? These are the ones where the ranch is cool? Ah, yes. The ranch is much cool in these. You, you like. have the ones where the flames are hot. Flames are hot? I think that's right here. Yes. Look, flames are hot style. But you don't have the one where the taste is not sweet and you the... Know. Much salt? Much salt and some of the vine taste. <laughs> Gar. You feel me? <laughs> no. The vine taste... The one that tastes like the thing that goes with wine. Are you... Or oil. Want, I mean. Oil? You know when you have meat in bread and... Yes. Some... One... <laughs> <laughs> God, that game. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. fun trying yeah. to trip each other up. Yeah, it's uh... yeah. So that, that game's well, a good one for people to like trip up on and like people swap out. And uh, part of the part of the really fun part of it is screwing up. And you just like I like to like give up and be like the the salt and vinegar ones. I want the salt and vinegar ones. Damn it! And then the next <laughs> guy comes. In. Oh, is that what you're talking about? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Gar. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see yeah. like on that the picture that we had with like us on the stage with the marks, the actors will like line up on the sides and then if someone like messes up I go, I ring a buzzer and then that person goes to the end of the line and the next person comes out. So it's uh it's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, thing. that's that's my favorite game. So uh yeah, guys, that's uh, that's all we had. Uh, I'd just like to thank thank you for coming uh, out here tonight. Uh, again, this is uh, Goblox, the host of VR Chat Improv, and my mentor, and uh, really helped me a lot with my improv stuff. I run some great show every Sunday. Anything you wanna you wanna add thank to you. that? Uh, check it. definitely go to vrchatimprov.com. Uh, there is a great starting point to find out if you want to just come and view the show, if what we did up here looks like fun and you want to try it yourself. No pressure if, you're, if you just want to try it out and not be in the show. As I said, we have the workshops on Saturdays. You can come by uh, and, and have at it and see what you think. So, yeah. And there's also a, a box on the website where you can uh, actually fill it in and like send a message to me uh, if you want, if you have any questions or anything. So. And you can also catch Goblox on the Tuesday, which is a which is a, my improv show here in Alt Space uh, that that uh, plays or runs to the well. It's part of the We Are Improv VR channel, and uh, yeah, we're we're all here and a big improv community now. Yeah, it's yep. awesome. And then there's a for the next Hive event. Uh, they're going to, on the 14th. Uh, they're going to have the Heart of VR Art uh, with Nava Berg. With uh, it's going to be hosted by Nava Berg with Samantha Luck and Kevin Ang. So check that out.
Yep, and I uh, just want to say thanks to uh, thank you again, Godbox, for coming out here and uh, VR Chat Improv, the whole Absolutely. team that comes here in the whole space now. <laughs> it's a pretty big <laughs> team of us. <laughs> yeah, it's we're joking fun. because it's all... what's up? Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say it's all about having fun, so we're having fun doing it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was joking about um about the Tuesday uh past few weeks it's only been uh me life and steps vitrium and goblox and we're all from vr chat improv so i was like oh it's like vr chat improv and alt space tonight might as well just change the name of the show right <laughs> this is <your> show yeah <laughs> yeah and also a big thanks to vivian uh having me having me here tonight and uh for having this show always going here in alt space uh michael for producing trip uh, over here, uh, Bulletproof over here, uh, Alex23, all these people that make this make this show come together. And, uh, yeah, just catch everything else going on with the High VR. Follow them at uh, on their Twitter at the High VR, or they also got the Facebook page you can follow. And you can also check it by going to the uh, Events tab and um, uh, watching when it comes up there or following the channel on altvr.com. If you follow the channel, it'll sign you up for uh, notifications for every future High VR event. So thank you everybody.